the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue. But upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched, and the person or things to be seized. The Fourth Amendment of the United States. Hi, my name is Kylie Hill, a CTE student from Spanish Springs High School. I'm here to talk to you today about unreasonable search and seizure in the digital age and how the Fourth Amendment should benefit you. The Fourth Amendment does not guarantee protection from all searches and seizures, but only those done by the government and deemed unreasonable under the law. However, there is evidence of police violating the Fourth Amendment and going too far to take justice into their own hands. How far could be too far? Let's take a look at some court cases that could answer this question for you. In 2012, many cars came with a built-in GPS device. The GPS helps many people get to where they need, but this device can come to a surprise when you find out it can track and monitor your vehicle's movements thus violating the expectation of privacy you expect to have from the Fourth Amendment. In the court case here in States v. Jones, the GPS device in the vehicle was deemed to be trespassing. If probable cause is there, then why not seek that? Uh, why not get that warrant for what it is that you're after? But it's always being pushed, and, and right now, those things are being tested in courts as we speak. I try to put myself uh, in the terms of, of what are we searching and what if that search was being done against me. And uh, I think, in my own opinion, someone searching my property, even overhead with a drone, uh, would be an invasion of my, my personal liberties. And it can get kind of vague and if you look at the actual law, the way that it's written. It says papers, effects, and things of that nature. And so if we were to look at that in the terms that it's actually written in the Constitution, I think that it applies to many of the things that we see in modern technology as far as uh, social media and, and other platforms that house our personal information. If there's a runaway juvenile and the family's worried sick and they don't know where their kid's at, we can use that by legally obtaining their information through phones and or Fitbits or other devices or social media. In this next case, most everyone can relate that your cell phone can hold the privacies of life. When Riley was arrested, the Supreme Court decided police could not look through the cell phone without a warrant. Even with the arrest, Riley still had protection under the Fourth Amendment of privacy. The Fourth Amendment offers the U.S. citizens protections uh, of privacy. You may be worried about some text messages or pictures being obtained. Uh, that information doesn't get obtained by law enforcement unless it's through a court process, uh, such as warrants or um, consent or court orders also. Information that we would need to investigate the homicide or, um, or even an attempted homicide would lead us to, uh, let's say, Facebook or some other social media platform. And information that is in that platform may have uh, the details of the crime or may be able to help lead us to solving that homicide. And so in my personal experience, we've had to seek warrants for people's social media accounts or information that they have stored in different electronic devices uh, so that we can obtain that, that information to try and solve the case. And that will conclude our documentary on search and seizure in the digital age.